Hello, folks. Welcome back to the Food for the Faithful channel with me, your reluctant prophet, up here in beautiful Gracefield, Quebec, at the Bivouac de l'Ancien. Today, we're going to discuss the age of performative caring. Our present government, the arts in general, and the greatest proportion of religious practices are purely performative. They constitute the mere show of virtue and affiliation with righteous causes while hiding the rot within. They're a show aimed to entertain the witless and deceive the gullible, so please don't fall for it. They are the Disneyland version of the real thing. They are but a false image of ought, what ought to be worshipped. For if you reject God, you will have made Babylon your false God. Before we discuss performative care in the political sphere, let us begin with examining why outwardly conforming to religion is why, not what God desires. Since there are several scriptures that address the issue of focusing solely on outward appearances of religiosity rather than on the inward transformation of the heart. Here are a few passages that warn against such practices. Matthew 23, verses 1 to 36. This chapter records Jesus' criticism of the religious leaders of his time, the Pharisees and teachers of the law. He denounces their hypocrisy and legalism emphasizing that they should not be followed as they do not practice what they preach. Jesus points out that they are more concerned with their image and status than with justice, mercy, and faithfulness. Matthew 7, verses 16 to 20, in which Jesus teaches the true followers can be gentrified by their fruits, meaning their actions and the outcomes of their lives, rather than just their outward appearance or declarations of faith. James chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. James writes that faith without works is dead, suggesting that genuine faith will result in actions that reflect that faith, rather than just outward expressions. 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. God reminds Samuel that he does not look at things people look at. People look at outward appearances, but the Lord looks at the heart. These scriptures encourage believers to focus on the sincerity of their faith and the transformation of their hearts, rather than just external, the external practices of religious rituals or traditions. They serve as a reminder that true religion is not about outward show, but about inward change and living on one's faith, though actions through actions that align with God's will. All the references for that section provided underneath. From an article in Sky News entitled Lefties Losing It. I'll read a short excerpt from it. I provide the link. Lefties Losing It, Justin Trudeau, the king of performative caring it was first written on the Febru February 9th of this year. Sky News host Rita Panahi brands Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau the king of performative caring. Mr. Trudeau <laughs> declared that Canadians don't want a politician to make Canada great again during a speech in the House of Commons. No, after all, I mean, who, who would want their country to be functional and to be a great nation to live in? Who would want such a thing? The comment was aimed at Canadian opposition leader Pierre Poilievre while he addressed his government's policies aimed at tackling the cost of living. Yes, why would Canadians want Canada to be great again? What a shocking concept that would be. Ms. Panahi said. 
The next Canadian federal election will take place on or before October the 26th, 22nd, rather, 2025. God help us all. In another article, and I'm quoting from MSN here, I provide the link. Author Douglas Murray has called Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau an utter bimbo and accused him of performative caring after his party recently lost a by-election. And again, this is, MSN got it from Sky News Australia. It's hard to find a true thing he's ever said or a sincere thing he's ever said, he told Sky News Australia host Rita Panay. He is an utter bimbo, a phrase that maybe one wouldn't use on a female politician these days, but I'm happy to use of Justin Trudeau. So those are <laughs> Douglas Murray's thoughts on Trudeau. Hypocrisy is a vicious value expressing inconsistency. The psychological phenomenon that often causes individuals to double down on their lies even after being exposed, is known as cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance occurs when a person holds contradictory beliefs, attitudes, or behaviors, which leads to a feeling of mental discomfort. To alleviate this discomfort, individuals may engage in mental gymnastics to justify or rationalize their behavior, rather than admitting fault or changing their stance. When someone lies and is confronted with the truth, admitting the lie would mean accepting that they have done something wrong, which conflicts with their self-perception as a good and honest person. To resolve this conflict without altering their self-image, they might double down on the lie, deny the facts, or attack the source of the truth. This defense mechanism allows them to maintain their belief and their own integrity and avoid the discomfort of acknowledging their dishonesty. Cognitive dissonance is a powerful force that can lead people to stick to their guns even more fiercely when presented with evidence that contradicts their beliefs or actions. It's a common human experience and is not limited to any particular group or type of person. All the links from that portion of research underneath that section. Now, the New Democratic Party, the NDP, leader Jagmeet Singh, has suggested that voters are done with Trudeau based on the results of a recent Toronto by-election. Singh interpreted the by-election outcomes as a sign of voter frustration with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and the Liberal Party. He mentioned that his sentiment was something he'd heard often at doorsteps, indicating a broader public dissatisfaction. This statement reflects the NDP's perception on the current perspective, rather, on the current political climate and the changes faced by the Liberal Party under Trudeau's leadership. All the links for that research under that section. What about Singh himself? Yet Jagmeet Singh, the leader of the New Democratic Party, has experienced a drop in his poll numbers. According to a study by the Angus Reid Institute on April 2024, Singh has a net rating of minus 14, which is the worst ever in seven years as party leader. This decline is part of a broader trend where all major federal party leaders in Canada have seen their popularity reach a five-decade low. That's a 50-year low. The Conservatives, led by Pierre Poiliev, have opened up their largest lead, yet with the NDP trailing behind. In a recent Abacus poll, if an election were held, 44% of committed voters would vote for the Conservatives, while the Liberals would get 24% and the NDP 17%. This indicates a significant shift in the political landscape and voter sentiment in Canada.
all the links for that research below. And now my conclusions. We live in an age of performative caring, whether it be political or religious. The sheer insincerity of those we have entrusted with our spiritual care and fiduciary accountability is proof we live in an age not very unlike the time of Christ's earthly ministry. Israel's religious leaders were utterly corrupt. Its king was a puppet of a foreign government. The Jews were living under occupation, hoping Christ would deliver them from Roman rule. Yet their spiritual leaders were described by Christ as whited sepulchers. These very leaders were in turn the ones who demanded that the Romans crucify Christ, thereby fulfilling the prophecy in Psalm 118, verse 22. The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. Frankly, I am one of the very few Christians who is openly exposing the most pernicious false doctrines of our time, namely cultural Marxist critical theory and its parasitic idea, loosely ideas loosely defined in the prevailing woke narrative. Worse, the chief expert on these idea pathogens is an atheist, Dr. James Lindsay. When an atheist is doing more than the churches to expose the toxic ideas that are at the core of our cultural and political demise, this is an indictment of the church and Christian leaders. Surely these are dangerous times, when the substantive has been replaced with a fake and few seem to notice. Therefore, this is why I state with absolute assurance that we live in an age of performative caring, of performative politics where our politicians behave like soap opera actors, and many of our preachers are more concerned with building giant houses of worship than in building up the body of Christ. I will never hide the truth of the gospel behind a paywall or require subscriptions for you to listen or read my thoughts regarding our present dilemma. There can be no political solution to a moral, philosophical, and spiritual crisis. These words are a call to repentance, mine first as well as yours. I've wasted far too much of my life in trivialities, pursuing hedonistic pleasures. The life I live now, I desire to live for Christ in defense of his truth. Join me at www.youtube.com at Food for the Faithful to become part of Christ's solution to the prevailing zeitgeist of our time. God bless you, folks. These are things to think and pray about on this June the 30th and on the morrow. Have a blessed Dominion Day and remember that our ancestors didn't create this nation to be, uh, what, a post-colonial patriarchal tyranny. That's a lie.